Welcome to this month's Ask Parse Anything. Today we're speaking with our engineers, Nikita Litsenko and Grant Lin Chu. We're going to be asking them a lot of the questions that you have uh, sent in and a couple about building and open sourcing the SDKs on Parse. Welcome everybody to our Ask Parse Anything. Today we have Nikita and Grantlin. Nikita works on the iOS SDK and Grantlin works on our Android SDK. I want to ask you guys quickly if you could share a little bit of your little bit about your experience uh, building the uh, SDKs and open sourcing them. Grantlin, can you share a little bit of, uh, about uh, your time building it? Yeah. So one of the biggest things that we've learned uh, developing our SDKs is how to develop it out in the open. Before everything was done behind closed doors, we would make all the decisions and we would release our SDK. Now it's all done through GitHub. We can post our issues publicly, go through all our code reviews publicly, and get our input from you as developers on how we want to build our SDK and the direction we want to go in. So it's pretty cool, and we'd like to continue it further. If I want to summarize a column, what would be the most effective way? Grantland, can you answer that question? Yeah, so the best way that I would summarize a column is to either do a running count on the column itself of the values that you need, or to cache them separately. So we'd have a new table for all your cache values that you need to summarize. Um, as the data comes in, you would use an increment or decrement to update that data. And um, if you have a backlog of data, you can use a background job to kind of precede that data. Can we send notifications from a desktop application to a mobile application without using the Parse console? Nikita? You can definitely do it. And there are basically two approaches that you can take. If you want to use the SDK, say on OS X or in JavaScript on a web, you can uh, enable client push in the settings on your parts app and just use the SDK to send those notifications. The other approach, which is way more secure, is build the same application, but instead of using the SDK, use a master key and a REST API. Are you planning, or are we planning, on developing a scheduled push system? Right now, we don't have any plans to build a scheduled push, push system, but you can simply do it by queuing up any pushes that you have into a table on your database and have a background job to push those um, at the scheduled time. So we don't have anything right now, but it's not too hard to do it um, with our current infrastructure. If I restrict a user's ACL to just that user, how do I save on that user? Uh, the question here is, assuming that the developer has the user ID um, or the user object. Grantlin, can you answer that? Yeah. So if you have an ACL on a user and it's only to the user, that user can already save itself um, to parse. If you want to save it as a different user or without a user, you can do it through cloud code and use the master key, because that will override any ACLs that you have on the object. How can my app enter data in an offline mode? And then, when I'm online, or the user's online, synchronize that data. Grantlin? Yeah, so this will be a perfect use case for a local data store, which is in our iOS and Android SDKs. Um, first, you would, while you're offline, store everything into the local data store with like maybe a flag that says, need saving. And then when your application comes back online, you can re-query all that data by that flag, need saving, and save it to parse. Once it's done saving to parse, you can then delete all those from local data store. And then that would basically synchronize your offline and off online modes. Why can't I send pictures and push notifications? Nikita? That's a good question. It all comes down to actually platform limitations on, say, iOS or Android. Apple recently raised the limit for their Apple push notification service to, I guess, two kilobytes. And you can send the images up to two kilobytes in the form of data which is great for really small black screen images, but doesn't serve the purpose of s sending, say, a big photo. If you send the URL, though, in a push notification and download that image on the client, first you get the platform support for both iOS and Android, or .NET with Unity, as well as you can get the big images, downloading them locally from the client. Is there a way to clear the device cache for PF files? Uh, say a developer needs a way to delete all the PF files when the PF object that owns it has been deleted. That's another good question. Um, iOS system, since we place all the PF file cache in a specific folder, it actually is completely managed by the system. And if, say, a user downloaded a lot of music and they need 
that disk space, the system will go into your app and clear that cache automatically for you. We were looking for uh, actually adding an ability to clear the cache manually, and we have a public discussion open on GitHub on iOS repo. When will Parse be Bitcode enabled? And how do I upgrade the framework for iOS? If you're using Parse from things like, say, CocoaPods or Carthage, you already have Bitcode since you're compiling the source locally into your app directly or just building from source. If you're using pre-compiled frameworks from the releases page or from parse.com downloads, you will get Bitcode as soon as Xcode 7 goes live and iOS 9 is open to public. How do I clear the entire local data store? So to clear the entire local data store in iOS or Android, um, you would just use unpin all with no parameters. And if you're using any custom pin names, you would do unpin by pin name. And once you do it for all the pin names that you have, your local data store should effectively be cleared. On iOS, I want to ask the user to enter a password every time they use the application. But I don't want to create a new PF user object every time. What's the recommended way for doing just password verification? There are a few key principles here. First, you don't really need to log the user out using PF user since you're never allowing them to use an application before you, they enter a password. Second is you can still have the PF user and just take the password and hash it and say store in user defaults or on a disk on file and check the hash against the new user entered password that they entered in the form. Can an already subclass PF object be subclassed further? If so, how can this be done? Subclasses of subclasses of PF object are not different to just generic subclasses of PF object. So the key principles there is you still need to call a register subclass before the first time in your app that you want to use it. Another key principle, say if we take a PF user, for example, if you want to subclass that, you generally don't want to overwrite parse class name method because you don't want to store a user in a different collection. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks also to Nikita and Grantland for answering those questions. If you have any other questions, check out parse.com and download one of our newly open source SDKs. Thanks.